Hey guys, a lot of you ask me if it's possible to buy a cheap spray gun as a beginner and what spray gun to buy. So challenge accepted, I will try to find the cheapest spray gun on the market. I will buy it, I will test it, maybe I tune it and I try to paint a bike frame with this cheap spray gun. So let's check some online platforms and let's check what's offered. There's a huge range, cheap ones, extremely expensive spray guns and it's hard to find the right one. I'm searching for the cheapest spray gun and let's check this one. It costs only $12, which is nearly nothing compared to my professional spray guns. They cost 20 times more. So let's order it and here it is. Let's unpack it. I like to show you what's inside and if it's possible to paint the bike frame with the cheapest spray gun ever. Let's find out what's inside the box. The box says top quality. I'm not really sure if that is true, but we have to find out. And it's a mini HVLP spray gun. And HVLP means high volume, low pressure. And that's common for car and body painting, also for custom painting. And it means you can apply a high volume of color with a low pressure running through the gun. And that's very good because you can apply a lot of color and you have not so much overspray. Again, professional quality, let's find out if that is true. And it's a gravity feed spray gun. That means the cup is on top of the uh, spray gun and gravity forces the color inside the gun. You can buy also a bottom feed one, but I recommend gravity feed guns because they are easier to handle if you do custom painting or small paint jobs or car body painting or bike painting and things like that. That's good if you have a gravity feed spray gun. The working pressure is 2.1 kilogram per square centimeter, which is round about 2.05 bar. So round about two bar. That's common for most of the spray guns. The air inlet is one quarter inch, which is also good because that's a common size and the gun will fit to most of the air hoses and to all of my air hoses. So yeah, make sure you have a one quarter inch system and you buy a one quarter inch pistol and that will fit to most of your air hoses and compressors. The cup volume is 150 cubic centimeter. I'm not really sure if this is cubic centimeter, but I think so. That's a good size if you want to do bike painting like I do or small custom painting, like painting frames for motorcycles or little graphics on tanks. So 150 cubic centimeter is a good size. The nozzle size is from 0.5 millimeter to 1.0 millimeter. I'm not really sure what's inside. I ordered a 0.8 millimeter. There's no marking on the box. So hopefully there will be a, a 0.8 millimeter nozzle inside this box. So let's open it. And that's inside the cup. It's yeah, cheap plastic. Hopefully it is solvent resistant. And that's the gun. Looks like a cheap copy of a SATA mini jet and yeah, I'm really sure that the body is like a SATA mini jet, but we will find out later. What's also in the box is the manual and that is really good. It's a plug nipple and the connection is it's for fast connection. And let's check if it's one quarter inch. Yeah, that's perfect. European size, one quarter inch. And that fits perfect to my air hose system and to my compressor system. If you have another one, make sure you have the right nipple. And if you don't have the right nipple, you have to buy it extra. You can screw it underneath the gun. And what's not so good, there's no seal inside. There's no seal inside the nipple, also no seal on the gun. So you have to buy extra tape. That's the silicone tape and you can use it to seal these connections. I will show you later how that works. And what we have also is a brush to clean the spray gun and a sieve that's, uh, that can be mounted inside this cup. But uh, that's only for one way use. You can use it one time and then you need a new one. So you have only one. And that's mounted inside the cup like this. And check this, there are chips in the cup, I have to remove them later. Can you see them here? Hopefully. 
Imagine such a chip get, chip get loose by solvent and runs through the gun on your fresh painted parts. That would be horrible. So I have to tune the cup, of course. I have to tune this nipple. I have to seal it. And yeah, let's find out what's that. It says, yeah, 0 0.8. That's good. And yeah, it looks really like a copy of a cheap minigun. And what's also not inside is a wrench like this. Most of the expensive spray guns uh, are delivered with these wrenches and they are perfect because you find uh, the right size for every of the screws on your uh, spray gun, also for the nozzle. So buy yourself such a wrench if you don't have it and if you buy a cheap gun, you need it to dismount the nozzle and you have to do it very often if you change color and if you want to clean the gun. And what you have here is a cheap seal here and now I'm sure that's a copy of a SATA mini jet. And if this is cheap plastic and not solvent resistant, I will run in very bad problems. So what I can recommend is to change this seal to an original SATA mini jet seal. I have one here. Check this. That's absolutely the same. Same in diameter and size. So I will tune this gun and I will mount a better seal. I will try to test this first if it's solvent resistant. And if it is, it's good. If not, buy yourself a seal from the SATA mini jet. Because if this is not 100% sealed, your spray gun will spit on every of your parts you like to paint. And that's a horrible nightmare if you have drips on your fresh painted parts. So that's a piece that should work. And if it don't work, Buy a better seal like this one from a SATA mini jet. I found another bad problem on this spray gun. The fan size control is loose. Can you see this knob and how it wobbles? And imagine you are a newbie and you try to adjust the fan size like shown in the manual and nothing happens. That can be frustrating. So if you buy cheap guns and cheap parts, that is what can happen because the Chinese workers are bad paid. And yeah, when somebody's bad paid, he does bad work. And you have to make sure you know how this gun works and what to do and how to adjust it. I'm not really sure if it works now and I have to check it inside the paint booth. Hopefully it works. If not, I cannot adjust the fan size. But we will check this in the paint booth. What I have to check also is the needle and if it runs perfect inside the spray gun. Here you can see a spring and the spring presses the needle inside the nozzle. And the needle has to run smooth and perfect inside the gun. And check this. That's a cheap needle with a brass fitting. Can you see the big thing in the middle? That's the brass fitting. And brass fittings has to be greased. They need to be greased because that's an aluminum body and these aluminum bodies can corrode by solvents. And the grease should avoid this corrosion. And if there's no grease, the needle can stick inside the gun and the spring is no longer able to push the needle inside the nozzle. So the nozzle stays open and this gun will try or will start to spit on your fresh painted parts, big drops. And that's a nightmare when this happens and you can start from scratch. So make sure this needle runs perfect and smooth inside the gun. I have luck. In this case, it's perfect. But there's another problem. If there's grease inside the spray gun, there can be grease also on the needle. And if you mix grease inside your color, your paint job can be ruined also. So you have to clean the needle. Not the fitting, only the needle. There need to be, on, need to be only a little bit grease on this brass fitting, not much. And that's perfect. Now you can mount the spring and also this little adjustment knob and you are sure that your needle runs perfect inside your spray gun. Push the trigger and now turn this knob until the trigger pushes forward, until you have force on the trigger. Okay, that's the adjustment you need. Now we can mount the seal. I will use the original seal, the black one, and I will try if it works. And it has two sides. 
a back side and a front side. I'm not really sure what's the back and the front side. So I will try it this way and if the gun doesn't work, I have to turn it around. And here I have to mount this little plug nipple and as mentioned I will use the silicone tape. And what I have to do is very simple. Wrap it around the spray gun three to four times and that seals this connection. Like this. And now you can mount this little plug nipple. And if you have a professional wrench, you will find the right size also for these nipples. And done. Now I have to tune my cup. As mentioned, I have to remove the chips inside the cup with a knife. That's what I do. And when I've done that, I will change to the paint booth and I will try to spray with this cheap spray gun. Uh, I'm back from the paint booth and guess what? Yes, the spray gun isn't working. The fan size control isn't working, get, it gets loose every time and I cannot adjust the fan. And when I cannot adjust the fan, I cannot spray with this spray gun. And the second major issue is, listen carefully. Can you hear this? Where's my microphone? It's leaking. The cheetah valve is leaking. And guess what happens if air is blown in this direction? All the dust on your hands, on your overall, will be blown on your fresh painted parts. And that's not acceptable, it's a nightmare. So I'm not really sure what I should do. Should I fix this gun or should I throw it in the trash? Yeah, I will try to fix it, but I can tell you that's no fun. And I cannot recommend to buy cheap parts or to buy cheap spray guns. I will try to fix it. And yeah, maybe you are luckier than I and you buy a better one, but that gun turns into a nightmare. That's what I can tell you. Let's check the first problem with the cheetah valve. And yeah, I can see what's the problem. Can you see this? There's only a small rubber seal here, this black one. And it's not able to seal this part inside the body of the spray gun. So I will try to use also the silicone tape and Hopefully I can seal it with it. So I will wrap around some silicone tape and I will try to seal this connection in this way. Yeah, first problem is solved and now I can use also the cheetah valve to close the airflow and it seems like it's tight. There's a small leakage but only a little bit and yeah, it's a cheap gun so what should I do? But there's no airflow and yeah, now I have to fix the fan size and wish me luck that I can do also this fix. And here we have the problem. Can you that that is the knob? And can you see this little hex shape inside the knob? And it's too big. It can't twist this screw. And it slips. And that's the problem. So if I use a nut from my wrench case, all works perfect. So I'm not really sure how to fix this. I will try to fix it with some glue and I will glue in this little screw and hopefully 
That will fix the problem. Yeah, these are cheap made parts and they don't fit perfect and that's the complete problem with these cheap uh, spray guns. So hopefully I can adjust the fan size. I'm not really sure if that works. I will leave it for an hour and yeah. Hopefully that's it. What I can tell you is it's absolutely nerve-wracking to buy cheap tools and try to use them. I regret it every time, but I do it for you. And the challenge is to use the cheapest spray gun on the market. And the only test this spray gun passes well is the flip test. And Hopefully I have fixed all the problems. So I'm starting with gun cleaner, never with color. Yeah, if it doesn't work, I don't have to clean it. So let's put in some gun cleaner and let's try to spray. Whew, wish me luck. Yeah, not so bad, but it doesn't look like a 0.8 needle. Uh, I think it looks more than a 1.2 or 1.4 needle. And I will compare it later to my professional ones. But yeah, now it works. So let's change to the paint booth. I prepared a frame and I have to primer it. That's not the perfect gun for primer. For primer, you need a needle nozzle combination of 1.4 to 1.8. And in this gun, there's a needle nozzle combination of 0.8 mounted, but it looks very big. And yeah, now I'm a beginner, not a professional. So I have only one gun for all the steps. That's not what I can recommend. A professional would use a primer gun, a base coat gun, and a clear coat gun. Never mix all these things in one gun. And yeah, but now we have to do it. So we have to clean it between all the steps very carefully. And that's what I will do. I will change to the paint booth and I will try to apply primer with this cheap spray gun. Yeah, what should I say? She does the job and not as bad as I thought it would be. So the gun works, but stay tuned. I will try to apply amazing color shifting effect like this with the spray gun. For these color shifts, you need a professional spray gun, which runs perfect. So let's try if this gun can do it as well. And I will compare it to a professional one. And I like to show you also some tips how to clean the gun, because that's very important if you run different materials in the gun. So stay tuned. I will load it with some color shift and I will try to paint the bike frame. Before I can start spraying the base color and the effect color, I have to clean my gun properly and that's an important step and you should listen carefully because if I don't do it properly, I can ruin my paint jobs in seconds. And if you want to do a proper paint job, that's what you should do as well if you have only one spray gun to use. And as you can see, I rearranged my studio 
That is my gun cleaning station and I made a several video how I built it. It's made of stainless steel, stainless steel with different trays inside and they are needed because stainless steel cannot corrode by the solvents inside the trays. And before I start, I will put on some personal protection, a pinafore, also some goggles because the solvents and gun cleaners can harm your eyes, so protect yourself. And you need also some chemical resistant gloves. And I will put you all the stuff underneath in the video description. Find it in the video description under the video if you have to buy it yourself. And yeah, that is my station, different trays. And underneath the station is a barrel of gun cleaner. That one, because I have to clean my guns very often. But if you don't need to clean your guns so often, you can use also a smaller bucket like this or a smaller can. And I have two trays for cleaning, one for the guns with the clear coat inside and a bigger one for the guns with the primer and the color. Never mix these by yourself, two trays, one for the clear coat and one for the color. Never clean your gun in only one tray. You will never clean it perfect. And cleaning is very simple. What I use are different brushes like these. Also the brushes delivered with your spray gun. I have different ones because I have different spray guns and also a pipe cleaner. Check this one and that's an important tool to clean your gun perfect and properly. So buy yourself such a pipe cleaner and I like to show you how to use it. And at first I have to dismount the gun. Yeah and of course I have also these gun wrenches, some of them for different guns but they are mainly the same and you can find every every time the right size of the nuts you have to use. My gun is clean, but I will clean it again for you. So at first, I dismount the cup, put it in the tray with the gun cleaner. Now I have to dismount the nozzle. You need the wrench to do so. Yeah, there's also the seal inside, so don't forget it and don't lose it. Don't leave it in the solvent too long. You can put it on a paper towel. I have some paper towels in the third tray. So you can put it on for drying. Now you have to remove the needle. And you have to put in the gun as well. Normally there's color inside and it's a mess. So do it over your tray. And now you can use some brushes to clean the gun. That's absolutely simple. It's like washing the dishes. And to clean the gun properly inside, use the pipe cleaner. And I do it like this. I make it wet and then clean your gun like this. Yeah, and there's nothing special to it, but you have to do it properly. And there should be no color left inside when you're done. The same with the bucket or the cup. At first I use a bigger brush like this. I brush it. I remove all the color. Now the pipe cleaner. And I do it like this. Yeah, clean it perfect inside and outside. All the parts you have in the tray. And it takes only a minute, nothing special. Put it on the paper towels for drying. Wait 10 to 15 minutes until they are dry and you can rearrange your spray gun. And what I have to tell you is that's very important. When you clean the needle, you have to clean also the brass fitting, this one. And yeah, you know that this brass fitting has to be greased. So you have to re-grease it after cleaning the gun. Okay, don't forget the grease when you rearrange and rebuild your gun. Yeah, that's it. Clean the nozzle like this with a brush and all the brush hairs, uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, I try it. I do it with these long brushes because the hair should stick 
on outside on top of the, the nozzle. Maybe you can see it. Uh, that's my glove. I can't show it well. But that's how I clean these nozzles. Hopefully you can see it. Can you see it? Okay. I do it very fast and hopefully you understand what I mean. So there should be no color left inside the nozzle. And when you've done that, rebuild the gun, fill in some gun cleaner and spray again some cl gun cleaner through the gun until there's no color left. And that's all. Very simple. Now we can fill in some base color, some black base color. I will start with black, then I will change to the color shift and I like to show you how to spray a bike frame with this gun. Wish me luck, that all went well. And when all went well, I like to show you the result on the bike frame. One thing before we <laughs> have you seen that? One thing before we can start painting. You have to do a reset up of the spray gun because when you clean it you can turn the knobs and it's not set up like before. And yeah, as you have seen, I've gun cleaner in my gun and I'm doing a quick setup, spraying the uh, gun cleaner through the gun so you can see how the fan is and if the pressure is the same. So let's try it. We need more pressure and I will set up also my fan. Here, yeah. and that's the quick setup. Now I will load some black color, some black base coat. I will come back to you and I will paint the frame. No flip this time or I will have a black face and that's not what I want. There's black base coat on the gun, so let's go. I've mixed some of the amazing color shifting color <laughs> and now let's find out if this cheap spray gun can handle also these premium pigments. That's a spray gun paint stand and it's good to fill these guns. I need also a zip and if you want to buy a uh, spray gun paint stand yourself find it underneath in the video description. And if you want to see a complete paint job I did a speed marks a week ago find it in the corner and yeah follow me because I will paint also another bike with this color. And wish me luck, there's no need for error because that's a client paint job. And hopefully this spray gun can handle this color. I will not flip the gun because the hole in the lid is too big and it will spit right in my face. I know you like that, <laughs> but that's not what I like. So wish me luck and let's go.
The color shift is on and <laughs> sorry. The color shift is on and it looks amazing, but there's one test left, and that is if the spray gun can handle also clear coat, if it produces orange peel or a slick like finish I'm used to. Now I have the cleaning gun absolutely perfect to not run into trouble. And when I've done the cleaning, I will fill in some two component high solid clear coat and I will put it on the frame to test the spray gun for you. No more talking, just playing. The paint booth is running and I loaded the clear coat. So let's go. Summary! Does the spray gun spray? Yes, it sprays, but does it spray right out of the box? Never, never, ever. The good things first, yes, it works, and I decided to give the spray gun away to one of you. So what you have to do is you have to comment underneath the video with the hashtag spray gun because you watch till the end. That's very good and that's what I like. So one of you has the chance to get the spray gun. Now it works. You have seen I painted the bike frame and I like to tell you some facts about the spray gun if you want to buy it. Compared to a professional one, that's a professional Iwata. That's the shotgun, the cheap shotgun, and that's the sniper rifle. The Iwata costs more than $300. That one 12. So what? I like to show you what was my problem and the first one is I'm a lefty and check this. When I pull the trigger I turn also the fan size. Every time I pull the trigger there's a risk of turning the fan size and imagine I'm spraying and the fan changes. That's a horrible nightmare and I'm absolutely not able to do a high quality paint job. First disadvantage is if you are left-handed and if you are right-handed, okay, it works. Next disadvantage, I used it one time, as you have seen for the frame, three times in total, primer, color, and the clear coat. And check this, can you see it? All the blue coating is gone, I can see bare aluminum. And if you use it very often, as I do as a professional, it will corrode and there's corrosion, there is a risk of fail. And if you use it two to three times a year, that's no problem. But I spray a hundred times per year and yeah, that's not what I need. So that's not good for me. And the trigger is hard as hell. My fingers hurt. Yeah, that's also not so good. That's so easy and I can adjust it very, very well. And here I have to pull very hard. So that's also not so good. But if you use it not often, so what? And also a disadvantage is I don't know how to buy spare parts. Imagine the seal breaks or the nozzle is no longer good or whatever your cup breaks or a parts loose. Yeah, you can say, okay, it costs $12 to buy a new one, so what? But not, of a profession, not as a professional, I need a reliable gun. Check this, all brass fittings, cool coating. And yeah, that's what I have to use as a professional when I spray 100 times a year. If you are a newbie, it works. Yes, but it works not well. You will have a hard time applying clear coat like a pro. But yeah, if you want it, I will give it away. So comment underneath the video, hashtag spray gun, and maybe one of you can use it. I have a lot of professional guns, I can't use it. Uh, yeah, I will have it in the cabinet and I will no longer use it because I like to use these. And if it helps somebody of you, that's good. So comment underneath the video and maybe one of you is the lucky one and yeah now it works I tuned it a little bit and yeah all the problems are gone and thanks for watching check also my other videos I like to show you of course the frame I painted and see you in one of my next videos goodbye Woohoo!